Well, you are not alone. If you often feel that you're drowning, you can't catch your breath, you have that endless to-do list. So what do you I do about everybody it? Everybody feels Everyone that way has those days. moments. Uh, here to talk about the dark side of being busy and then give us some tips on how to be more balanced, more healthy as licensed professional counselor, counselor Kristen Weber. Great to have you back on the show. Uh, what are your tips on this? Because I think everybody, I mean, everybody I talk to these days is like, oh, I can't do that. I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too busy. Yeah. I mean, th think of the last time you ran into someone and you asked them how they were doing and you got, oh, I have just been so crazy busy. Or the last time you maybe tried to schedule dinner with a friend. And I know I'm guilty of this. You're looking like two, three weeks out in your schedule and it's like, okay, I can fit you in between 6.15 and 6.45. Uh, when did we right. get like this? People just have so many demands on their time these days. Uh, but I think as a mental health professional, what really worries me is kind of this culture of acceptance around working ourselves to the point of a mental breakdown. <laughs> and, and I think as a society, we really need to stop the glorification of busy. And a lot of people kind of wear that busyness like a badge of honor, mm -hmm. I think. I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, and I always say we are human beings, not human doings. It was Socrates who said, beware the barrenness of a busy life. And I think that's so profound and so true when you look at some of the negative consequences for not only our mental, but even our physical health and living kind of that go, go, go lifestyle all the time. But I mean, society gives so much credence to the guy that can, you know, sleep four hours a night and work off zero hours of sleep and it just... It's incredible how that gets propagated in a way. It's like, oh, this is really great if you can do that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And we feel like we need to keep up with the next person. Yeah. Uh, and we do live in such an overstimulated kind of achievement-oriented society. Uh, but I think what ends up happening at the end of the day when people live like that is they end up experiencing fatigue. They get overwhelmed. That opens us up to symptoms <clears throat> of anxiety, depression. Uh, people's immunity goes down when they're stressed and not getting enough sleep and they're more susceptible to illness and people's productivity ends up tanking. They get exhausted and they burn out and that's not what we want. So how do we kind of break away from this if you aren't super busy, don't have 10 extra things on your schedule every day? I mean, sometimes people view that as bad as if you have downtime, you know, so how do we get away from that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And oftentimes what I like to do with clients is I'll have them make a pie chart. How do you spend your time? Okay, let's map it out, let's look at it. And then let's talk about what are your core values? Let's identify your top three, uh, five tops core values. And is how you're spending your time reflective of those values? How we spend our time is a great way to communicate with other people what's really important to us at the end of the day. And a lot of times people sit back and it's like, whoa, you know, if I, if I look what I'm doing on a weekly basis, no, that's not what's important to me. And so then we can talk about, let's get a pie chart <clears throat> together about how you would ideally like to be spending your time and some simple changes that we can make to kind of help the two align more closely. So what if somebody's super busy and they're doing a lot of work and doing things, but it does align with their values? Are you gonna say, okay, then as long as you're happy and that aligns with your values, is that okay? Or if, if you're enjoying your lifestyle, you know, if you're looking at your schedule at the beginning of the week and you're not feeling overwhelmed, you're excited to do these things, these things energize you and bring value to your life, that can be a really good thing. But it's when we look ahead to the week and we get that feeling of dread mm -hmm. or we're not kind of taking that time for self-care, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, that's when we need to start reevaluating. That was a good sell right there. Stick yes. around. <laughs> we're going to talk about taking care of yourself right after this.